are looking at an AP Physics C free response question problem for the mechanics test. Uh, the year is 2002. It is question one, and let us begin. Um, what we've got here is a crash test car. Ooh, I hope the dummy's okay. Uh, with a mass of 1,000 kilograms, moving at a constant speed of 12 meters per second, and it is a completely inelastic collision with an object of some unknown mass m. Okay, so let's look at a few things here. It's an unknown mass m. At 1,000 kilograms, speed of 12 meters per second. It's an inelastic collision, uh, and it's hitting at a time equals t0. Okay. The object we hit was initially at rest. Um, the speed v in meters per second of the car object system after the collision is given as a function of time by this expression. Okay. So what we've got here is we've got some car crash thingy, 12 meters per second. It hits something, and then afterwards, these two things are stuck together, and they're moving at some velocity is given by this here. And we have no idea what the mass of this is. Okay. Uh, what we're asked to do in part A is to calculate the mass of the object. It figures. So how do we go about doing this? Um, well, since we know there's a collision here, and it's going completely inelastic, we can conserve momentum here. Um, what we can do is we can say that whatever momentum we had initially, that has to equal the final momentum right as the objects hit, right as they hit it, this case. Um, we can't do it for some longer time because we see this velocity is going down with time being in the denominator. So there's some other force acting on it. But we can say initially, um, uh, there is a conservation of momentum here. So to do this, uh, we know that momentum is a mass times a velocity and we know the initial mass, it's just the car, it's just the 1,000, and we know its initial velocity is 12 meters per second. This has to equal the final mass, which is the car, the 1,000, so this is 1,000 right here, but this is the mass of the car, the 1,000, plus the unknown mass, and then times the final velocity. Now that final velocity is at t equals zero, and since it's the car mass system, we actually know what it is from up here. So what we can say here is that mv initial, or 1,000 times 12 meters per second, so 12,000, that has to equal the 1,000 plus m times whatever this velocity is at t equals 0. Now at t equals 0, we have 8 over the quantity 1 plus 5 times 0, so that's just like saying 8 over 1, which is just really 8, right? So if we rearrange this a little bit, we could divide by the 8. We're going to get 12,000 divided by 8 equals 1,000 plus m. So we'll do the 12,000 divided by 8 to get some number. So 12,000 divided by 8 is 1,500. And then we'll just subtract 1,000 off of each side to find that our mass here, 1,500 minus 1,000, equals 500 kilograms. So yeah, not too bad. Momentum activate. I don't know where our wheels are if this car went. Here they are, wheels. Um, something we should note, though, is while that was just a conservation of momentum, pretty straightforward, they've given us a function in this problem for the velocity. Anytime we see them give us a function in any APC problem, we're probably going to have to do a fair bit of calculus. Um, uh, we know velocity can be related to accelerations or it could be related to distances. Um, uh, we know that uh, dv dt's can go back to forces for us because of those f equals ma's. So I have a feeling that we're going to see a fair bit of calculus as we go through this just by seeing that function. So be ready for it. Um, assuming an initial position of x equals 0, determine an expression for the position of the car. There it is. Um, after the collision as a function of time t. Uh, so after the collision, we know what the velocity is at that point. We know the velocity after the collision is 1 over, or excuse me, 8 over 1 plus 5 t. And we know that if we want to find the position as the function of time, we need to set up a differential equation, um, which would read as dx dt. Now, luckily for us, from the calculus, we know that velocity is 
the derivative of the position as the function of time. So we know this here is 8 over 1 plus 5t. And this just means we need to separate variables and then solve this. Um, I want to get all the t's and constants by themselves on one side, so I'm going to bring this dt up to the numerator. Um, this will allow me to write that dx equals 8 over 1 plus 5t dt. And now I can integrate both sides. Um, this is going to allow us to solve this as a function of x. Uh, the integral of this x here um, is from initial position of 0 to some position x of t later on. So when I run the, the integral of just dx, uh, I'm going to get x back. So here's my x of t that I'm looking for. Um, the right side is a little bit more annoying. Uh, I have a dt in the numerator, but my only other t in this problem is in the denominator, which immediately, because that denominator isn't squared or anything, gets me thinking natural log. Uh, it's just going to look kind of ugly. Um, a natural log requires a u sub sub times, which is what we're going to see here. So u equals 1 plus 5t, which means du is equal to 5dt, which means I need a 5 in the numerator, and I've got this 8. So I'm going to multiply by 5 eighths to get rid of the 8 here. Now I've got 5dt. But since I multiplied by 5 eighths kind of willy-nilly, I'm going to also multiply by 8 fifths. So it's like I'm multiplying by 1 and nothing's happening. Um, that's just properties of u subs right there. So when I do this, I'm going to get 8 fifths uh, times the integral of du over u, which is the natural log, which I like. And it's going to go from some initial position of 0, so kind of from nowhere, to some time t later on, which is what I really care about. And uh, I know I'm going to get the natural log out of this. So I'm going to get 8 fifths times the natural log of my quantity u, 1 plus 5 times t. And uh, I this is where I can just end it here. Um, I know in this case that I want my initial x position uh, to be 0. Um, so I'm not going to add any other pieces there. Uh, if time equals 0 here, the natural log of 1 is 0, and then from t is just that point. So this is what I want for that. Um, if I wanted to, I guess I could have put 0 to t to be more proper. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. So yeah, there's the first bit of calculus there. Uh, let's see if they've given us any more. Um, determine an expression for the resisting force on the car object system as a function of time. So we know the velocity is going down whenever this time increases because the denominator is increasing. So the full velocity uh, is slowing down. This means there is some resisting force on the car. And what that means is we can say that F equals MA. And anytime we're using calculus for something like this, we can say this is M dv dt. Now, what dv dt really means is that this is the derivative as a function of time of this velocity function. So we can say that the force we're looking for here is just equal to the mass of the system. And this mass is 1,500 kilograms, because that is the car and the mass thing we hit. And then we just need to find the derivative as a function of time of the quantity 8 over 1 plus 5t. So we just need to take the derivative of this right here, which I'm not super psyched about because this means quotient rule because that's a fraction. Uh, but it's not impossible to do so. So let's give it a shot here. Um, we'll just do it over here. Uh, let's see what's going on. So I'm going to have my 1500 again. And I'm just going to leave that to the side. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, let's worry about the quotient rule. Uh, quotient rule is uh, numerator times the derivative of the denominator minus the denominator times the derivative of the numerator all over the denominator squared. So let's see how this goes. This is the numerator, 8, times the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be 5, because the 1 is going to be 0 and the 5t is going to be 5, minus the denominator, which is 1 plus 5t, times the derivative of the numerator, derivative of 8 is 0, so this is all going to go away, it's nice, all over the derivative of the, or the denominator, just the denominator, squared. Okay. 
Um, eight times five is gonna give me 40 here, which I could actually multiply the 1500 by. Um, oh, what the heck is that? That's weird. 1500 times 40, uh, 60,000 apparently. So I'm gonna get 60,000 in my numerator divided by the quantity one plus five T squared. And this is what that resistive force is going to equal. This is what the force is going to be right here. Okay. So a little bit more calculus for us. Surprise, surprise. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at the last part here. Uh, determine the impulse delivered to the car object system from t equals zero to t equals two seconds. Um, there's two ways we could do this. Uh, the first way that we could do it is we could recognize that an impulse, remember impulse is a J, an impulse is a force multiplied by a time. And since our force is changing, we could rewrite this as the integral of the force dt. Um, and this goes from zero to two seconds. Since we know the force from previously, we just solved it up here. Um, we can say this is the integral of 60,000 divided by the quantity one plus five T squared DT. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I hate calculus whenever things are squared in the denominator. If you're like, hey, that's a really easy integral, I'm gonna do that. And then just plug in the upper and lower bounds. Sure, that's awesome, congratulations, you've solved the problem. Um, if you're like, ah, I'm so sick of calc, let's do something different. You can also remember that an impulse is equal to a mass times a change in velocity. Because remember, an impulse is a change in momentum, and that is what we have right here, a mass times a change in velocity. So what we can say here is that with this mass times a change in velocity, remembering that the mass that we have is just that 1500s, um, we could say that we have 1500 kilograms and then what's our change in velocity? Well, our velocity was given to us by the original equation. So what we can do here, doing a final minus initial, we can say eight over one plus five times two seconds, that's the final point, minus the quantity eight over one plus five times, oops, five times, five times one plus five times the initial velocity at time uh, zero, so that's zero there. And this means that this on the left, uh, five times two is 10 plus one is 11, so this is like eight elevenths minus eight over one, eight. That's what we have there. So eight elevenths minus eight is some quantity, it's negative and then we can multiply it by the 1500. So let's see what we get. Uh, 8 elevenths is 0 0.7272 minus eight, negative 7.27 uh, times 1500 gives us 10,900, negative 10,900. And our units of that are Newton seconds because that is an impulse, okay? Um, we could have done this integral up here. We would have found that we'd have got that answer as well, okay? Uh, if you're sick of doing that integral, then don't worry about it. You can do it uh, just algebraically. So, yeah, kind of a fast problem if you know what to do um, and if you're pretty calm with your calculus. Uh, but it was a calculus-y problem at that. Uh, but a nice conservation of momentum, combining it with some position and forces and impulse. Uh, with that, though, this problem's finished. That was a fun one. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good one. Adios. Ooh, ba ba dum bam.